How are we doing, guys? Uh, Mitch back with um, another nice piece of information, I think. Um, <clears throat> so, over the last few years, um, we've been fishing hardcore for walleye, and we've had um, lots of different ways to store different um, baits. Um, and one of the things that I came up with for spoons, um, I think, is is pretty simple, pretty cost effective way to store your spoons. Um, now there's a zillion ways to do it. Um, there's all kinds of special tackle boxes you can buy for them. Um, you know, you can get the tubes. Um, those are great. You can get the boxes that you know sit real high. They're about six inches deep, and you hang the hook from the top, uh, and then they hang down into the box. Uh, but I think there's some cons with all of them so far that I found. Um, and there's definitely some cons with this one uh, here, this piece I built. Uh, the difference being this was a couple dollars. All right, this is a couple dollar fix, um, and it allows me to get to my baits very quickly, know what baits I'm grabbing, um, and kind of move on. So without further ado, um, this is this is the unit I had put together. All right, as you can see, um, you've got. So this is just an art bin, as you saw right there. All right, I got this one at the art store, local art store. I think I paid four dollars for this, um, maybe even less. <laughs> uh, knowing me, it was probably on sale, and I didn't spend very much on it. And you can see inside, it's clear lid, so I got a very quick access to whatever color bait I is. I can see if it's in there, or I can go, oh, it's not in there. It must be on another line right now. All right, so this is this is sorted. I'm also pretty pretty big on trying to keep baits organized whenever possible. I have a couple like this. Um, you've got coppers in the back, so copper backs. All right, that's that last row. Then you've got silver backs in that next row. And then you've got anything that's colored. If it has a colored back, it's going to be up here. And then you've got some baits forward. Um, this one over here, this uh, silver one up front, one in front of it, and these four over here. These are all baits I put together personally myself. I painted. Um, trying to dive into it, obviously you can see I'm still having some troubles, it's chipping, um, they're all kind of peeling a little bit, uh, it's going to take some more practice, but everything I need is in this box for when I'm reaching for spoons. Now, right here you're going to see this piece, uh, I'm sure you saw my other tutorial about three ways, uh, I'm a big three way guy, um, I don't understand why people don't always try and maximize their amount of um, baits in the water on every single pole. Out here, uh, we get three hooks to a line, so why not fish three hooks? Um, you don't have to fish three baits, but why not fish two baits that have one, a combination of three hooks, right? Um, and a spoon only has one hook on it, only ever has one hook on it. Um, now you can add a trailer or something of like that, I shouldn't give it two hooks, but most of the time that's not necessary. Um, so this is nice quick easy way to get to those three ways uh, it, these are the only time I'm ever reaching for these is if I'm using spoons um, there is once in a while we'll run two crankbaits and get a little cute with it so I would reach for these but um, I have a handful of these in another place as well uh, make it nice and easy for me to go ahead and grab those uh, the other thing you'll see down here uh, let's see if you can see it there you go uh, you'll see some hooks right here all right and then you'll see some trouble hooks over here spare troubles Great place to keep them, right? Um, you can put them in a box. You can put them in a different bag. Um, but why? If you have room, just keep them with your spoons. That's what you're going to use them for. The only thing you're going to really reach for is a pair of split ring pliers uh, so that you can throw the new set on. But it's just a nice, easy place to have them. You don't have to have two dozen in here, but two in here is good because really you're only ever going to foul up one or two. And if all of them, you know, you get the end of the season, they're all dull, then you just break them down, take them all off, and do it all at once. This is this is really just if there's you hit a rock, hit a snag, you get your bait back, but you lose an eye um, to the hook or, or whatever. You lose a barb or it's just a doll, whatever it is. Um, you can swap it out really easy. But back to these right here. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, spoons lately. Um, that have basically a worm harness attached to it. Um, now this is my own version of that. Basically what I did here was I took about six inches of line, tied on a, on a snell, snell hooked a, uh, okay, snell tied a hook on, excuse me. Um, let me see if you can see that hook there. Um, maybe. 
Well, smell that. Anyways, um, good worm hook. Um, and then I just tied it to a micro swivel. All right, and, and uh, this allows me to go ahead and pop off one of these trebles, leaving the split ring on, and then I can just replace it with this, all right? Or I can just tie it together um, any which way. And this allows me to now add a worm, a live bait, minnow, whatever I want to put behind this spoon, right back here. So this basically becomes the attracting pattern, and this is what they're hitting. Whether you put worm or, um, I mean, I guess out west you would do this more, or out east you would do this more than you would here, but like a shrimp or something of that nature um, <clears throat> for a steelhead. But for walleye, you're looking really, you're going to be using a minnow or maybe a shad um, <clears throat> or a worm. Um, but either way, you're able to do it. Uh, you can keep the trip uh, treble hook on, or you can pull it off um, either way. Um, it really comes down to what you need uh, in that specific situation. Now, if you're just going to run this off one main line, you're going to be running this uh, spoon straight to your main line or whatever behind a dipsy or jet or however you're getting it down. Um, that's fine. You can do it this way. Again, I three way, um, and I use that. I do that so that I use my uh, my deep diving crankbaits as the divers. So I don't need a jet diver. I don't need a deep sea diver. I don't need extra terminal on my line other than a three-way setup. So a three-way, a couple snaps, and then I, a diving crankbait. And that gets my bait down to the depth that needs to be it to be fishable. If I'm going to be doing that, I wouldn't leave the treble hook on. That's me. Um, that's because I want to fish legally. I don't condone anyone fishing illegally. Um, so I would pop this off. I pop this on, throw the live bait on, and then basically just use this as a flasher um, along with the crankbait. So the crankbait really sending out um, <clears throat> big, big disruption into the water um, and hitting the equilateral line um, so that the fish really sense it. They, they, they can feel it. They know it's there. And then maybe this is catching um, their eye, or maybe I'm using a brighter, more flashier pattern like this with all this silver and chrome um, to kind of grab their eye from a distance and then they get up close and maybe they're they're being nitpicky and that's why we're in this situation where I am using live bait and we're trolling a little bit slower maybe uh, and so then they come back here and boom here's a worm nice juicy worm or a nice fat shad or a little little uh, shiner something they can smell something that they can taste nibble on chew on and then boom good um, so yeah, this is a great setup. <clears throat> this is just another way to fish spoons. Again, um, I believe in making things as easy as possible, but being as efficient as possible. Uh, so when you're out there, you want everything you need for a for certain style of fishing all in one spot. So this is why this box for me has been kind of a game changer <clears throat> before um, I used, I just used all different kinds of boxes. I never used the tubes. Um, I thought about using them. I just, they seemed so bulky and they took up so much room and just, I couldn't rationalize it. Um, in addition to that, it didn't allow me to store any of the extra goods that I want, which is these hooks or this setup over here with these hooks with the uh, swivels on them for live bait fishing. Also didn't allow me to store my uh, <clears throat> quick rig. Um, this one I got, again, uh, at the backpacker shop. Uh, I always support local uh, stores, support you know all, all the good stores around you no matter where you're from. Um, it goes a lot further um, than kind of going to those big guys or buying it offline. Sometimes it only makes sense to buy it off online. Sometimes you can only find a certain product or a certain color um, in um, some of the big box stores so to speak. Um, and that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is at times. And if that's the case, then do what you have to do. You get, you get the color you need. Um, whenever possible, always support the local places. Uh, so, yeah, this is a quick tutorial, quick look at uh, my box. Now, again, this is super easy. Um, and I love the way this is set up. So I'll give you a quick look at how I put this together. Um, let me grab a pen here and see if I can pop this out. So this is, this is again, just a... $4 box, art bin box, a deep one. It's about three inches. Um, and then I went to Home Depot and I bought some pink insulation foam. All right, pink insulation foam. That's it. Nothing fancy. Cut it off 
to kind of fit right in here. Um, then you just pop it right in and you're done. Um, super simple, uh, super easy, and extremely functional. Uh, that's, you know, that's, again, that's the piece about me. Um, <clears throat> I only want to bring one one duffel bag out, and you guys go, "Oh my God, you're gonna hold a duffel bag out." Well, I bring a duffel bag out, and I've got more gear in one duffel bag, organized, quicker to find um, than your whole garage. Um, and that's because I use things like this to store. Um, another good good example of that is right here, these inline weights, right, with swivels. Um, something like this, where you have them all in one place. Um, you don't have to worry about it. You, you know when you reach for that box, you're going to get the weight you need. You're just going to find it. You're going to know what it is. So um, something I haven't done yet with this box, which I will do, um, is label the weight sizes. Uh, the good thing is these weights do already have the size, the numbers written on them. Yeah, you definitely are not going to be able to see that, but the numbers are written on them. So I know what weight they are um, just by looking at them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always easier when it's written right on the box and you don't have to think too much about it. Um, so again, uh, if you want to go out and make this, I think you're probably all in at 15 bucks. Um, <clears throat> and you're not touching um, a specialized storage container for spoons for $15. Um, and not only that, you know, that's, that's really you're utilizing for that 4x4 four four piece of foam. I mean, you're, you're utilizing... You, a quarter of it or less um, so really you could get four boxes out, out of this so for call these five dollars and call that piece you know ten bucks which is less than that um, you're at uh, what is that five ten it's twenty it's thirty bucks for thirty bucks you're able to store I don't know hundred spoons two hundred spoons uh, you're not doing that <laughs> with these other the other products on the market and really there's there's nothing better um, than getting to know your own uh, needs um, and what you have um, by figuring out ways to store it quicker, right? You figure out what you really use, what you don't use, um, and how you use it, and how you need it stored to make it easy for you. Um, and that's really just the easiest piece. You know, you buy all these other you know setups or specialized ways. They they might work for you. They might work great for you. They might be all you ever need. Uh, but if you make something for you, it's going to work for you. Uh, it doesn't matter if it works for anybody else because it doesn't need to work for anybody else. It just needs to work for you. That's all that matters. So, um, yeah, man, if this was helpful, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, you know, please reach out. Tell me, you know, hey, I think you probably could have did this. Hey, I think you probably could have did that. Probably would have worked a little better. Um, the only thing I can think of question-wise you guys might have that someone might throw out there is, how does it react with the paints? I've had no issues with the paints. Um, none of the paints have reacted in any way uh, to this insulation. Uh, and these have been in here for three years. Um, I mean, I've been adding spoons and losing spoons over that time. But, <clears throat> I mean, there's one, this one, this one. There's a handful of spoons in here that have been in here for, for the better part of three years. And it might even be four years now. Um, and there's been no reaction. They've been... In 100 degree temps, they've been in 10 degree temps um, and no issues. They've gotten wet the whole nine yards. Um, so, yeah, so go out, build your own, um, get closer to your products, and don't forget to buy local. All right, take care. Bye.